We've had a very cold spring this year in Sweden, so I didn't have much hope of finding many insects today. But today was an unusually warm day, up to 14 degrees Celsius. So I decided to try something fun, to use the Raynox DCR250 on the 2 times modification MSO Eco 90mm lens, which would give me a full frame equivalent of 8 times magnification, which is pretty extreme, but could come in handy for the very tiny insects and spiders you can find in Sweden during this time of the year. On this photo walk, however, I did a very big and very embarrassing mistake. We will get back to that. But I was surprised to find a lot of spiders and insects outside. It was a lot of fun because this is the first time this year that I can go out where I live and photograph insects and spiders. When you have the Raynox 250 attached to the 90mm M Suico lens, you notice two things. First of all, the depth of field is extremely small, as you would expect. And also, it is kind of hard to find the subject in the viewfinder, because you have such a big magnification that it's really hard to point the lens exactly where the subject is. So that took some getting used to. And it is not helped by the pretty long working distance of the 90mm. We are not spoiled with too many... YouTube channels about macro photography, but recently I found Alexis' channel, Naturefold, and I really love his videos and his photographs and his way of explaining what he does and all his knowledge about the insects and the spiders that he photographs. I can really recommend you to subscribe to his channel. And he actually, in a recent video, gave me the inspiration to try to look under the bark of dead trees. And despite me doing macro photography for like 8 years and teaching it for 7 years, I've never actually tried that. And today I tried it and I found so many beetles and isopods and interesting creatures. So it was kind of mind-blowing. And it's something that is perfect to do in early spring when you don't find too many other insects flying around. Also, when you find sleeping insects under the bark of dead trees, they tend to be very still, at least for a couple of minutes. So you have a good chance of getting a really good, deep focus stack. It is really hard to keep still enough at this magnification. For example in this photo you can see some blurriness and that is because I happened to move the camera a little bit during the stack. So you have to be really really careful when doing these stacks not to make that kind of mistake. One of the most beautiful things about going out for a photo walk every week, month after month, year after year, is the slow but steady growth that you experience. Every time I go out I do a couple of mistakes, small and big, 
But I always learn from them, so next time I go out I don't make those mistakes or I improve in some other way. And I really love this slow growth, this slow improvement of my craft that happens. I love the feeling of being on a very long, lifelong journey where I enjoy each moment but where I still discover new things every day. When I find an ant hill and want to get some nice ant photos, I always look on the nearby trees, especially if I can find birch trees which give a very nice white background, because the ants will be crawling on nearby trees, and poles, and whatever they can find to climb on. Direct sunlight is something that can often destroy your photo, so uh, here I used my hand to try to create some shade to get a softer and nicer rendering of this little beetle here. When you come home to do your stacks, it can sometimes be interesting to experiment with the depth. Compare this photo with this one. I only chose a bit fewer photos to include in the stack and got a very different result. And when I write that the stack contains for example 29 photos, it doesn't necessarily mean that the stack is made up of exactly 29 photos, it means that the original stack that I took included 29 photos, but some of them might not have been used by the stacking software. Uh, it's hard to know exactly how many were used in the actual stack. So now I want to tell you about the big mistake I did during this photo walk. During the whole walk it felt like the magnification was less than it should have been. And when I got home I took some of these photos and I realized that yes I was right. I had only been shooting at one time magnification on the macro lens. But how could that happen? Well there is a switch on the side of the 90mm lens and if you don't have it set in macro it will actually never go beyond one time magnification even if you're using the manual focusing clutch. And I think this is a bit unintuitive. I thought that all of the three modes on the switch include two times magnification, but it's only the S macro mode that includes this. So <laughs> next time I go out I will have the switch in S macro and I will get true four times magnification with the Raynox. Stay tuned.